Stage 4 has unveiled a new era in the Overwatch League. With Roll Lock in place, it's anyone's metagame at this point. The Shanghai Dragons will be your Stage 3 champions! The Shanghai Dragons have a head start on the competition, fresh off a triumphant Stage 3 title win that revolved around their damage duo of Ding and DM. They together, best far widow duo in the league right now. Meanwhile, the Seoul Dynasty are ready to unleash their versatile superstar, Fletter. Fletter showing his prowess with the Hanzo. See that which is Activating shield. Ah! Both teams know that a victory today will help them secure a top six finish and a ticket to the season playoffs. Seoul and Shanghai, the Tiger and the Dragon. Whose claws are sharper? We're about to find out in the match of the week. Gorgeous sunshine over Los Angeles this afternoon, but we wouldn't know that, you know why? Because we're inside playing video games, and this is where you want to be right now for match of the week here on week one of stage four. The Shanghai Dragons, the Seoul Dynasty, like Josh said, Tigers and Dragons. Who's gonna come out on top here? We have our reigning stage oh, yeah. three champion, Matt, in the Shanghai Dragons, who had a slow start to stage four. But the, the meta's changed. Right now with Roll Lock, where you have to have two damage dealers, two tanks, two supports in play. Uh, the Dragons, it's a big adjustment for them. They ran a lot of three damage dealer setups in the previous stage, which they end up winning. It'll be interesting to see if they can bounce back today against Soul Dynasty. Yeah, people thought just because they were playing so much DPS, they'd be well positioned for this change up in the way the game is played right now, but that hasn't been the case so far. It was a grudge match against the Vancouver yeah. Titans, though, so, you know, maybe we give them a pass on that one. Let's have a look at where the league is right now, though, and your eyes need to be looking towards this top six. The Vancouver Titans still dominating there with a plus 56 map differential. But the Dynasty and the Dragons are still vying for a guaranteed playoff berth inside that top six. They're at seventh and eighth respectively with equal win-loss records. And you can see how big of a match this is. The Dragons need to win it because their map differential is nowhere close to the teams above them. I mean, even in seventh, the difference between them and Seoul Dynasty, their opponent today, is massive. Plus 15 to minus one. They need wins to overcome that poor map differential. They got to get one today. And for Seoul Dynasty, I mean, this match is huge. You win this, you have a chance to pass London. And here we look back, of course, at the first game of the week for the Shanghai Dragons. They went up against the Vancouver Titans, who they felled in the run up to that stage three championship. They're looking a bit different though, the Titans. They're looking much stronger here. Seoul Dynasty went against San Francisco, another dominant team in the Overwatch League in the Nighthawk Rattle Rumble. San Francisco looked like they had their measure, even though both teams ostensibly forced to play, or at least now having to adjust to a different style. Having only two damage dealers instead of either zero or three seems to have shaken some of these teams a little. And, and I think for the Dragons, you see them dominate at times with those damage dealers when you have like a DM and Ding going crazy on the map, where Soul Dynasty doesn't really like overpower you that much. Like when you watch them as a team, you don't really like get the sense that they're that dominant. But I think this is a meta, though, where if Flutter comes out big, they could actually make a run. And let's now bring out your first team, a team loved by many and hated by absolutely none. It is the Shanghai Dragons. You know, we talk about the Dragons a lot. Season one, obviously, they didn't get a win. Zero and 40. 40 games is so much now, I think about it. But it's a different team. The, you know, the franchise has made a lot of changes to the roster to ensure winning ways. And they've done exactly that here. And they're peaking at about the right time. You don't want to peak in stage one, Matt. You want to start to ramp up stage three, stage four, into our season playoffs. But the Dragons now have a very difficult schedule. This strength of schedule, I mean, how good their opponents are out of these seven matches, is the second hardest. Yes. They, they do have some depth on this roster, though. So uh, they have the damage dealer combo of Ding and Youngjin in today. Envy will be in in the off tank role. And then Luffy comes in. Yet again, uh, you know, he did not play earlier in the week. They started Izayaki, who they acquire from the LA Valiant in between stage three and stage four. So you see the support core for the Dragons. It's been in pretty much the whole season in today. And of course, there are opponents who are looking to start to actually live up to their name. Let's welcome to the stage, the Seoul Dynasty. Repping 82, I'm in Seoul City. Riding down the streets, got my homies with me. 
know, Matt, when I think about this team, when I think about Seoul, I think about Prestige. So many of these players wanted to play for Seoul. They wanted to represent their home country. And for many of their home city, they put off, and it's been said before this week, they put off contracts from other teams so they could play for the dynasty. And yet, you know, with so many top players wanting to be on this roster, they have not lived up to expectations. The name is a dynasty. That, that implies that they are yeah. living a legacy. But so far, it's been one of kind of failing to meet expectations. Yeah, no flutter. The starting lineup today will be illicit in fits in the damage dealer role. And uh, Jaehong comes back. He did not play uh, the other day for a lot of the series. Uh, so he'll play the flex support role, where I think you look at the team kind of built around him, right? He's like the mainstay of this soul Absolutely. kind of roster from year one into year two. I mean, what's he playing now? We've seen a lot of supports actually play more than just their main role prior. Speaking of which, on the other side, Jaehong's opposite number is Luffy, a player who was instrumental, absolutely crucial in the Shanghai Dragon Stage 3 victory. We saw Izayaki played earlier on. You said he came across from the Los Angeles Valiant. I mean, how do you sort of evaluate those two players in comparison? Or is it too early to tell? I think it's a little bit too early to tell. Like, we haven't seen Izayaki with this team outside of their one game. We haven't seen him in a while since stage one in general, where you know, Luffy can play a tremendous Ana, very good Zen. I think, like, the one thing you can say is, like, maybe you would want Luffy in on when to play the Ana a lot, and then maybe have Izayaki come in when you want to play Zenyatta. But, you know, Luffy and Koma just work so well together. I think it'd be uh, I think it'd be a little bit of a shame for them to mix up the support board. When we talk about biotic grenade eliminations, that is obviously kills that are gained as a result of hitting the enemy with the biotic grenade. Here's your map set presented to you by Toyota. And we're going to be starting on Elios here. An interesting map pool. This one features Hollywood, Junkertown, and Anubis. Uh, you know, after Elios, which are all maps where we see a real a variation of styles and approaches. And, and Junker Town is always like a scary one towards the end of the series. Bit of a uh, wild card, it, right? It is. I mean, it, it's a 50 50 toss up for a lot of teams. Like, we have some teams that are very strong on Junker Town, but still, results seem to be all over the place. It's good at Ilios here for control to kick things off. Uh, you see the Dragon's pretty good on this map, but much different. Meta now is, I think, a young Jin potentially, you know, locking in this Doomfist could be an impact player. Again, they're fighting over one point, both of these teams. We see much more of a, a brawly, fundamental style of Overwatch played here. It's absolutely about winning team fight after team fight. We're going to start off with now the team having ultimates here. It's about picks. Young Jin is looking to do that, especially on the Doomfist. Now you have Luffy play Moira here. So you're going to play Moira Mercy in terms of a support lineup where both supports are really looked at as like main supports can pump out a ton of healing. And I think you play the Moira to kind of get close to the Doomfist and also keep the tanks alive in case there was a dive that came out. It means though that Luffy has to play pretty aggressively. He has to play forward if he wants to try and heal, uh, you know, Yongjin with how deep he's going to be. But there it is already a pick. Jackson taken down by Yongjin's Rocket Puncher. This is not where you want to be against the Doomfist. The Dynasty do not want to be inside close quarters. It's very easy for Yongjin to slam in with that rocket punch and find instant kills. And Seoul actually got probably what they were looking for. Is they get a hack on Envy to kick things off, and then Fitz gets in position on the Reaper, and they're able to get the D-Mac. Envy will get a mech back now, but that's kind of what Soul Dynasty wants to do. They want to get a hack, they want to dive in with the Wrecking Ball and the Reaper and chunk down some of these tanks. You see Jaehong already here with a Coalescence get it providing a lot of healing with his Moira. Reaper, Fitz wants to play in close quarters. He wants to hide around corners and sort of break line of sight, but that makes him very vulnerable to the rest of the Dynasty to Yongjin's Doomfist. Meteor Strike here coming out from Yongjin. And it's going to be Koma taken down by the Cold Lesson. Jonkin's able to fire back, though he eventually lands and Fitz is not able to get out of the way. Now, using the shielding here provided by Gamsu, Ding actually takes himself down. The splash damage from his rockets on the masonry is enough to remove him. Not what he wants, but again, Yongjin, known for this Doomfist, especially in recent times, is putting in a huge effort. And the Soul Dynasty, yeah, they spread very thin over the point. They have a chance to recontest here with Marvel get getting rid of Luffy. That might be the play. Yeah, I was talking with uh, our stack guy, uh, you know, Captain Pine in the back, and he was telling me a little bit about like Young Jin on the Doomfist with like a player impact rating. Like, one of the more impactful players on the hero. That'll be Illicit using EMP here. So that'll be Ding knocking bits off the side. So that's a lot of damage gone here for Soul Dynasty. Is this is still the Shanghai Dragon's point. Did you see the peel for Gamsu there? Not only was he kept healed up by Koma, Envy threw the defense matrix in front of the hack Dorisa. They were looking to try and get a quick pick on Gamsu in the Dynasty. Weren't able to find that either. Then it all went upside down as Fitz was knocked into the pit. 
96% for Fitz on a Death Blossom. Again, the Dragons are going to be a little bit hard to connect with that kind of ultimate. And 86% on the clock for Shanghai. And it's really hard for Michelle here. She's really the only one who can really make Ding in the air struggle. Is see Ding just launching rockets from afar. That's preventing the dive from coming in through. Fitz wanted to play in close quarters, but he gets overrun by Envy. And now it has to be a sound barrier for the Dynasty to keep themselves in this round. It's overtime. Youngjin looking for a quick pick off here. He'll go for a Meteor Strike once more as a Sound Barrier Injector expires. <laughs> so does his life force. Youngjin now to follow up here as a Seismic Slam to get rid of the d -Mac Diva and clean as you like. Youngjin dominating in this round. Five final blows. The next closest player on his team has three and Seoul only had three kills themselves as a team. Youngjin with the flex there, a little, it was interesting. I think maybe like flex with the fist bump on both sides. Some players are like, kind of creative. Like the, the beach is the that cell, way. Yeah, yep. getting creative with the celebration, but you know, his doom fist popped off there in a big way. Uh, they had elicit on the Sombra. Like Sombra's pretty strong against doom fist, and the fact that if you hack doom fist, he loses you know, all his abilities. His abilities when you do the damage turns into shields, keeps him you know really you know, beefed up, able to stay alive for a while, and he you're is, not able to pick him off at all. He's very dependent on being able to use his abilities. Young, Youngjin doesn't die during that point, and they're playing Sombra Reaper, which would you think is pretty strong against the Doomfist. But again, if the Doomfist is able to get in, get an elimination and get out, then he has no worries about someone like a Doomfist who requires a little bit of time to complete kills. But Youngjin switches here, goes for the, the Reaper, realizing that if he's hacked by Illicit, he still has his most powerful resource, which is his primary fire. That's not shut down by Hacker EMP, and that's where he gets his health regeneration and a lot of his damage. And, and this is uh, from the Shanghai Dragons. They can play really defensive oh. here. Uh, that's a nice direct hit there from Ding, but when the dive comes through, you have good you know, self-sustain with the Orisa, with the Fortify, the Reaper can be there as well. A lot of healing with the Moira and the Mercy. As it's going to be really difficult for Soul to get into the back line. You see, they're trying right now, but they just have players dropping like flies. Now, you are watching someone who is likely, right now, the best Farah player in the world. Ding probably lived up to that title during the, the Stage 3 Finals yeah, yeah, matchup. Yeah. And the concussive blast that he, he fired off at Soul as they tried to converge on Gamsu it gave the Orisa for the Shanghai Dragons enough time and space to get healed up and remain a real pillar of defense on the point. They hold now at 15%. And yeah, now Soul Dynasty has Fitz play Widowmaker, so this is going to make it a little bit more difficult for Ding. Ooh, up yikes. in the air, but you see Youngjin putting some pressure on the high ground. You also get the Ana in play to potentially get a Biotic Grenade. You can get some players behind enemy lines now. You can land a Biotic Grenade, ruins the Moira effect on the other side. J-Hong ranks second in Biotic Grenade eliminations this season, by the way. Dominating on that Ana. Really good to have a veteran head on this team who's incredibly skilled in his role. Fitz taken down. The whole point of switching to Widowmaker for Fitz was to try and shut Ding up. But Youngjin is denying those high ground positions away from Fitz. He's just sitting there as Reaper saying, I wouldn't let you perch up here and take your shot. I'm going to punish you and push you down to the low ground. Is that Reaper's teleport now? It's not an instant death to a Widowmaker. You're actually able to teleport <laughs> towards the other side of the map. Gain some high ground as Luffy takes a shot there and has to back up. Marvel now applied a grasp on Luffy. He's going to heal himself up with that right click ability and he's going to wait for a chance to use Coalescence. He wants the Dynasty to start to build on the point. He actually avoids the EMP by fading it just the right time. And so he gets this Coalescence out. He isn't hacked after all. And dedicating much of that healing over to his tanks and then to his Fire and Mercy combination. Keeping his team up and there's the bomb. It's Envy with two. Jexa and j Hong are down and that is all your healing from Soul wiped off the face of the map. This has just been dominant from the Dragons. I mean, almost 9k damage more than Soul Dynasty here. Soul Dynasty only four final blows as a team. They go over to Tracer here towards the end. You take a look at this Envy self-destruct. He just launches it straight ahead. You have the Mercy there in position trying to get to anybody. Oh, oh, oh the so. concussive blast! Oh, really? Nice. That's what knocked Jackson into the, the bomb itself. Beautiful stuff. Here comes another bomb attempt here from Michelle to try and make something happen, but Ding shuts it down. The barrage comes in. Caduceus Blast of Jord by Jexa. He's trying to find a kill on that Mercy, but instead he tries to tend to the wounded. He brings Jay Hong back into the fight, but the Soul Dynasty's front line has been decimated. Youngjin now back to the point. It was Marvel trying to drop down and keep the round stored out. We're in yeah, overtime, mind you. The Dragons are about to take the map. And they're looking pretty well topped up health-wise. Youngjin finds his way into the back line, and he removes Jay Hong. That'll do it. Soul Dynasty completely steamrolled there. Shanghai looking confident. Looking pretty solid now when it comes to that 2-2-2 two, two, two setup and the Diva Bomb was really what sealed the deal. Great setup between Ding and Envy to make sure that Soul's backline 
could not be protected. And that's a great way to start the series for two teams that are locked at 12 and 10 and looking for a way into the top six. The Soul Dynasty need to go back to the drawing board and come up with something new. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. For the 2019 Grand Finals, tickets are on sale, overwatchleague.com. That's where we're going to be witnessing history made for yet another year. Will it be the Shanghai Dragons? There is a possibility. They're trying to make their way to Philly a little bit easier by sneaking in to that top six, guarantee their spot in the playoffs. Yes, the uh, Dragons have been very strong throughout the season. Uh, a little bit of a... You know, when they started early, I think it was a little bit up and down, but you no know, stage three, obviously they win the stage three championship at the end and looking here at stage four, running some of those damage dealers, looking pretty good. And the Dragons here, obviously always plenty of support in the arena for this team. Very popular squad of players and for good reason, not only a lot of personality, but really killing the game. They've even got some of their own teammates supporting in the crowd here. <laughs> we got DM Izayaki and Gegger in there, as well as uh, management staff. So I guess they're not getting summed in. <laughs> hey bro, these guys are, these guys are rolling, why, why not? Everybody hang out, watch Young Jin play some Doomfist. Hey, but, hey, if you stare at him, it makes him uncomfortable, yeah. guys. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it'll be the Temple of Anubis. You stare at me instead, that's fine. <laughs> we're map number two. Uh, we'll see, no changes for Soul Dynasty. Uh, no changes for either team, but no changes for Soul Dynasty is uh, they do not put anybody in here on off the bench. Is they, they are a team that makes a ton of subs. Uh, it'll be Fitz and Elicited in terms of damage. They'll have the Junkrat Widowmaker combo, so this is a Kind of throwback to season one here, defense on Temple of Anubis. Look, Matt, Josh brought this up on the desk. The Dragons have not won Temple of Anubis. It's not a sterling record for the Seoul Dynasty either. Still not boding well for the Shanghai contingent. But hey, it's 2-2-2 two, two, two now, Matt. It's completely different. Yeah. I mean, uh... Do we really just take the... Th no? Yes? Maybe? Shaking your head for him. No, you got... 
fits on the Widowmaker here on the high ground. Uh, DM obviously oh, not yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, come on! <laughs> so uh, Young Jin gets picked off there at the start, but yeah, you don't really have your standout Widowmaker in the game here. He sat in the crowd! He's, he's sat to our right. So. Young Jin, oh, he's doing it again. Okay, uh, deja vu, anybody? Young Jin, don't go out the door. Don't I know you're there. The other door. Mix it up. No. Okay. Okay. Get there. You okay. go. Great All right. Envy with some help. Envy pushes up to the high ground with rocket booster. Doesn't. We well, forces fits away, but more importantly, just blocks the shot. Defense matrix, pretty handy ability. Holt draws Envy back out into the open. They get some extra damage, but that's healed up in a matter of seconds. Young Jin still in the choke. Now he's going to come over the high ground. Oh, listen. The doom fizz. Luffy just nails him there with the darts from long range. But it was Young Jin that reset really that up. Everyone from the dynasty was knocked skyward. You can see Yongjin there now, he's where he wants to be, Matt. The Doomfist is in the thick of the action, and Marvel is down. That's the anchor for the Soul Dynasty uh, removed. And, and you would think this would be a poor map for Doomfist with the way it's kind of constructed, like a lot of high ground and whatnot. But there's a lot of like really cool like rollouts you can do on this map to get to certain places very quickly. Uh, not as like how you used to be able to do. I think uh, there was one from last year. I remember where an effect played Doomfist here, like got on top of the statue, made all the way to the back. There is ground. there is a rollout yeah, that lets you get from yeah. that arch in the front all the way to the back. Yeah. It's, uh, we watched it in first person at the time. It was quite uh, revolutionary. I think uh, Doomfist does get some adjustments though from that time to this time. So. Don't think you're able to make it anymore. Ding with an EMP here. This could be pretty fast for the dragon. The snowball is rolling down the hill right now. But Fitz is able to get Luffy early on in the fight. So the dragons is a huge part of their healing, especially since Koma's trying to be in the fight and not really sat in his backline healing up. He's able to get rid of Michelle, but Yongjin now has been taken down. The EMP looked good to start with, but the Soul Dynasty was still able to fight despite having their ability stripped from them. Four minutes and 55 is what the Dragons are working with. That's owing to a very quick point A capture. It's a pretty big sleep dart that comes in from Jae Hong as uh, Young Jin goes into the back, tries to get onto the sports. He doesn't actually get hit by the EP. He actually lands the sleep dart on the Young Jin. You had the meteor strike, so he could have been able to use that to you know, gain some more shields, gain some movement, get out. Self-destruct in the back corner, followed up by the Wrecking Ball. Okay, the combo was there. Gamsu was looking to get a knock up so no one could shield themselves. Didn't quite work out. At least it's Riptire. Also, oh, gets baited by the Meteor Strike. Yeah. Nothing doing there. Sometimes it's just kind of hard to find your opponent with it, I guess. You really need to be getting at least two kills with that to make it worth it. Especially because you're in, you're very vulnerable as Junkrat when channeling that tire yeah. ability. Yongjin back to the point, but again, Fitz finds a crucial kill mid-fight here, removing Envy. You see, Alyssa and Fitz are just set up on the point. Yongjin's got to be pushing for more here, but he needs to be careful. He's a little low, and Fitz can sort of chip him away whilst working outside of his effective range. Alyssa now on the Doomfist comes in, and the Dragons are very quickly dispatched. And it was another EMP that comes in from Ding, but there was nobody there for the follow-up, as uh, this is one of the times that we see Brigitte brought into play, where a lot of people were wondering, you know, not really the strongest in terms of just like raw healing output, right? Uh, it's just kind of hybrid with like a tank, an off tank like healer combo. Where I think now you see her use in this type of setup where you know, they're just having Jixay play around Jaehong and protect him as you know, an Ana pretty well protected can solo heal a lot of this. The dragons here are playing with Gamsu on Orisa, so they do want to pretty much set up front and center here. They're not trying to go for anything tricky around the sides. Young Jin slept. Marvel over the top here is going to try and capitalize, but he's put a slice hacked and put to sleep. So much crowd control aimed at Marvel there. He's able to get out alive, still the rally from Jex are helping that a lot. Dings brought back into the fight, but Koma has to give up his own life in order to get the resurrect, and that's not really the trade you're looking for. Elicit now to follow up, Gamsu forced to use Fortify to stay alive. He'll sit on the mega health pack, but Elicit's not worried about the Orisa. It's a matter of cleanup now for Sol. It's a good fight for the Sol Dynasty. They start building up towards some more ultimates as well. I wonder if Elicit's going to go back and switch here. Is... Nope, going to stay on the Doomfist. So stay on the high ground, go with the Doomfist players. I mean, it's, it feels I mean, effective, right? The, the dragons have to filter into a cul-de-sac, which means plenty of walls for Elicit to get extra damage. You do have to worry, though, with the Arisa reaper May combination in play with the Doomfist. You have to be very careful. Not to get caught, frozen, or just pinned against a I mean, wall. The team's got to fully commit with you to get something done, right? It's, so it means you have to play defense like an attacker. Yes. A little bit weird, a bit of a paradigm shift for defenders here. Fitz, oh, it took, takes a lot of upfront damage. He's able to use Ice Block and heal that away. Elicit is nano boosted right now. Seems that way. Okay, how much have we done there? Yeah. The dragons are not able to keep their supports alive whatsoever. 
You just have Illicit and Marvel. They do dive into the back and they go on the Luffy and Koma. And everybody else for the Dragons is like trying to push forward and make a play. And just having Envy back there alone is just not, he's not going to be able to peel and keep these players alive. And Defense Matrix does nothing against the Winston Doomfist combination. Illicit generates so much threat just by existing in many of these fights there. We saw it from his point of view where a lot of players were trying to get rid of him quickly on the side of the Dragons. That made it vulnerable to other approaches from Sol. Fitz is able to get in there, freeze him up. Now on the main. I mean, Illicit was nano boosted during that fight as well. So he's so. lit up, looking very sparkly, yeah. and he's doing this. So Edward Cullen will be jealous. Uh, you, you potentially have like a uh, supercharger here, like you kind of use that to kick the fight off, put some pressure back, maybe get a pick, clear some space. And then if you can clear the space, if you're the Dragons, then force Soul to come back onto the point, then you can use the Blizzard in a good way. Okay, so setting up the shield. I like how they use the Ice Wall to get onto the point unscathed here. They get almost a 50-50 fight now. Blizzard thrown out. No one from Soul is caught, you know, but have to stand away. See the drop down now. Alyssa goes for a Meteor Strike, but on the other side of the shield. So the AoE damage is blocked, and now Youngjin is in the back line. He gets a Nata Boost as well. He's not done yet. Opens up with the Death Blossom and then gets the finish on Alyssa. Yes, he's frozen up. He's not able to survive that one. Marvel follows up what Fitz began. And now Gamsu needs to be healed up by Koma. He switches now to a Resurrect and brings a Reaper back into the fight. This is far from done. Look at Luffy staying alive. A lot of healing output being provided there, and there's one tick already for Shanghai's progress. Fitz doubles down on the point though, he's found two. Marvel desperate to get back into the fight and help out his teammate. Koma's down and Luffy's missing, there's no healing left for the Dragons. They're in big trouble here on this capture and they're running out of time. Oh, and Fitz does not even need to invest the Blizzard into this. As the Dragons, they may not even get another good fight as Ding's gonna be the one that'll get on a touch and you may have Envy have a chance as well. It's looking very good as Ding is actually pushed the wall. back. Ding is forced to translocate there at the final second. He was so weak, and that'll be Soul Dynasty getting a hold. Shanghai Dragons have struggled on this map in the past. It is documented that it's not one of their best. And it looked like they struggled on the attack there. The mix up there from, you know, Elissa and Fitz going the May, going the Doomfist. Curious that are just amazing at controlling small enclosed spaces. See how this plays out here with Michelle. This guy just goes ham in the final moments here. Gets a 4k here towards the end, also has the nano boost. The nano boost. Yeah. I think for the Dragons, it was really keeping those supports alive, which was tough. We're seeing it more and more. Diva's being used now as an extra damage dealer. The nano boost helping it a lot. We'll see the second half of Anubis in just a moment. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T Mobile, and by State Farm. Whatever life brings your way, State Farm is here to help life go right. Three point three percent. That is how much progress the dragons were able to get on the point B. So the Soul Dynasty just have to exceed that here on their attacking side. By the way, more games to come. The Toronto Defy and take on the London Spitfire coming up next. That'll be with Hex and Semmer on the court. Twitch TV, ESPN app, Disney XD. Stick around for that one.
We've got great games lined up for you today. So it'll be uh, the Dragons on defense now. They'll play the Doomfist on defense, which Doomfist is kit, uh, obviously, you know, tailored more towards being aggressive, like an offensive hero. Uh, playing it with the Orisa Diva is very interesting. Is maybe you're trying, uh, if you're the Dragons, to bait the Soul Dynasty to dive this top platform. Uh, and, but at that rate, why not play like Junkrat, who's like a more, uh, I would say like in this type of column, like a safer in terms of like consistent damage. Ironic because nothing about Junkrat is safe, but I feel you. Yeah. But I mean, maybe that's why you have the far end play, right? So. All right, Lizzie gets the first pick there. Ding is the one actually taking uh, it down. Yeah. Koma can't get a resurrect there. Uh, Ding's body is essentially underfoot here for the Soul Dynasty. Yeah, Luffy with a pick on the Jayhawk. Uh, may not matter though. Gamsu being removed now could be trouble. Yongjin now needs to get a couple more kills. It needs to be more than just this. Marvel's gonna try and take him on here. We know he's got the health ball, but still, this is taking down. I mean, he gets two before he dies. Oh, that is exactly what you want as Doomfist. Trading just one for one as Doomfist is often not enough. He has the potential to get multiple kills every fight without an ultimate. You need to leverage that as often as you can, and he's done it. That was a second half that's gone down on a Ding. So Ding was the one the Earth trying to contest, put some damage down. He gets a nano boost as well. He moves to the high ground. He's trying to chunk down Marvel, not able to finish him off. God, Ding's in a great position to do work here, and he uh, follows the rocket seat. Quick double there. Now, primal rage for Marvel. He's trying to salvage his fight, but it may have already been lost. Yeah, with Youngjin finding a listen again, Ding does take himself down, but Michelle has no mech to work with. And Youngjin is just running rough shot over the dynasty. And that Marvel's oh. being taken out here towards the end. <laughs> Youngjin with to have another time. kill. Well, we'll see what happens in the next fight, though, because you will have a good combo here for Soul Dynasty with Fitz having the EMP and Illicit having the Dragon Blade. No real big, like, uh, no AOE support ultimate. Uh, you do have Valkyrie, but, like, Valkyrie, like, won't really be great against, like, the Dragon Blade necessarily. That'll force a res here, so... Did get one, it'll have to be rest up, so the res burn here for Soul Dynasty. Fitz is keeping an eye on, on where Yongjin is right now, and also the Fire of Mercy combo. He's trying to hit the EMP on both of them, he's trying to bring them down to the ground, and he's done it! And that's gonna be Illicit's opening now to follow in with the Dragon Blade. He took a lot of damage in the self-destruct, though, and needs to be careful. They're gonna Count hit 54. Oh, just the one kill, but it was resurrected up easily enough! Illicit now has to do it the old-fashioned way with just the Shuriken. Yongjin's able to duck back behind the shield, and Ding is fallen to Jaehong now. The Soul Dynasty starting to find the advantage here, but they have to use so much in this fight. Yeah, and it's a self-destruct from Michelle that's really good. They get no, like, kills with the actual self-destruct. You see some cleanup here coming down from Soul Dynasty. So that'll be Alyssa taking out Youngjin towards the end, but when Michelle launches that self-destruct, they see Koma go up to the high ground and go towards that mega health pack, and Marvel and Alyssa just dive right at him. There's nobody there we're Shanghai Dragons, you can get to the high ground, help out Koma, you get a pick on a Koma, you got one on a Ding previously, you're able to win that fight. Envy's self-destruct was really cleverly timed to give the Dragons some space and time and to shut down the Dragon Blade EMP yeah. combo, but there was more to follow from Sol. It does mean that Sol can't really snowball now with a bunch of ultimates against a, you know, a Dragons team that may have had to make some adjustments in team comp. And the Dragons did get 63%. They were not able to take the second point, but Ooh, did that get big. a decent amount of percentage. That'll be Youngjin who gets slept here, but I don't know if they can make anything out of it. They get him low. Jayhawk was yelling at his team, go for the Doomfist. He's asleep right now. Ding goes for the barrage here, but that's mostly eaten up by the defense matrix, and Michelle is going to negate that ultimate. Jayhawk down, though. Youngjin gets his revenge. It's going to have to be a resurrect now. Onto the captain of the Soul Dynasty. I love how Young Jin goes in with the seismic slam, hits an uppercut on the Jayhong and kills him and then gets away. And then Ding, like they just kind of rotate these two players in. Like Ding comes in, then tries to break up the res. Like they just keep rotating both those damage shields in. EMP here to open it up for Soul Dynasty. That'll be a defensive use of the self defense again, again for the Shanghai Dragon. Mano Blade time for Alyssa. He's looking first for the Farah. Who does it get there? And now we just have to kind of go for the Diva, and that's fair enough. But Envy's a bit of a sponge for damage. Alyssa. Much better targets for him to pick. And again, the Genji play falls flat for Soul. That's the worst feeling when you yeah. see, like if you're a Genji player and like you get the nano boost. Was he good custom blast in the way? Swing and a mi miss, I don't think so. And after that, like your only target's D.Va and you're just swinging into the D.Va, they're just staring at you. And you're like, like laughing. The reason why Dragon Blade is so powerful is because with nano boost, it can get kills instantly without giving support the chance to heal it up. So they give up the Genji here. They, they go Tracer Sombra. <laughs> terms of their dime, so 
You're giving up that big nano blade combo. It really hasn't paid off. Like, even the last time you used EP blade didn't get anything. Interesting. Illicit still play offensive far here. So that Young Jin switches over to the Reaper. So. Is that a concession for the Reaper, Matt? Uh, Going for the Farah? You, you know, the Sombra is good against the Reaper, and then the Farah as well. Obviously, Reaper can you know, do a ton of damage. It is so odd, though, playing Farah versus Farah here on Anubis B. Like, you can see the sight lines. It's really awkward for both Farahs. Well, I mean, interesting that there's no, you know, play towards Mercy, I guess, I guess against a Winston defense. Uh, sorry, we don't make it. Uh, it's a little bit tough to get a good perch because the defenders can just jump on you. So the Reaper is a very good fall for the Dragons on defense against Marvel on the Winston. Uh, we saw that in the match yesterday with the Hunger of Spark. Oh, that, that'll be a big barrage here come through from Dig as some cleanup comes from the rest of the Dragons. But I know Gushui tried to play the Winston into the Reaper of the Atlanta Reign. It did not work out. And now Youngjin playing the Reaper here is it's going to be very difficult for Marvel to go dive in. And you can play the Reaper if you're the Shanghai Dragons because they're not playing the Sombra, right? You're not really worried about getting hacked or anything like along those lines. 55 seconds left for Sol here. They need at least 63.3%. Otherwise, they ain't winning this map. And that would not be a, a great omen, uh, giving Shanghai their first victory on the Temple of Anubis. Working around the right side now. You see the repositioning there from Ding. The Fincastic Blast and Gamsu is behind enemy lines right now. Elicit's having to keep him there. It doesn't really feel like it's necessary to go for the kill, but it's an air shot. Ding finds Elicit. Both Farahs are down now. Airborne combat has been suspended. Or has it? Elicit's brought back to life. So Sol have the edge here. And Marvel is not going to allow Koma to get a resurrect on his Farah. So that puts the Dynasty at a slanted advantage now with 18 seconds left. The Dynasty have a chance, but Gamsu's in there. Fitz is down. Youngji tries to go for the Death Blossom, somebody to put to sleep. Envy drops in, though. The fire is out of the picture now for Sol, and they're running out of options. Only four players left. Still having two supports is good, but they're lacking the damage to follow up. And the Dragons spawn so much closer to the point. They're definitely in the driver's seat right now. Koma's down. Dink could be in trouble, though. Marvel and Michelle combining the main tank and the flex tank for the Dynasty get in there. He comes in beyond the point now, and yeah, you see Marvel's just trying to make something happen in the back corner, but there's too much healing available for Luffy, and a sleep dart connects there. That's a rough one. Fitz has to try and get away. Elicit attempted to make a play. Comes in with a fire attempt. Barrage is shut down by Luffy, and the Shanghai Dragons can hold. They've done it! Shanghai Dragons secure themselves the map two victory on a map that's, well, been a bit of a bogey for them. And Seoul not able to make anything happen on their point B offense. They did not look good on control. They did not look great there on the Temple of Anubis. They'll be interesting after halftime if they roll out with the same exact roster. They have a lot of good players on the bench they could potentially throw in to turn the tides in this series. But it's the Dragons up 2-0 going into halftime. We'll see you right back after the halftime show. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network. T-Mobile.
the Dragons and Dynasty came into this match with identical 12 and 10 records, but Shanghai is just a map away from putting a 13 in that W column up 2-0 over Seoul at the break. What's up, everybody? It is halftime. We got the crew here. Guys, uh, so far in this matchup, been pretty close, somewhat. That first map, <laughs> let's be real, Shanghai, they straight up just diddy bop the oh yeah so they they it was not even... can you repeat that word they skiddy bop <laughs> skiddy bop yeah they bopped right. them in like today the skid marks you, you know like a simple was... cop now <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> only you, you can take blame. that one bro only you no, to blame one. I, 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 that's from the streets right there man <laughs> but, but yeah it's been crazy so far uh so <laughs> I, I got a question about that first map well how does shanghai do it was it are they just untouchable uncontrolled yeah, maps I mean, these guys are uh, uh, un unreal i mean i said as well in the pre-show that they're gonna be playing into things strengths a lot of the time as well yeah uh young Jin as well coming out this guy a phenomenal doomfist player they found their own style right now where a lot of teams are still struggling with that and you can see it's paying dividends it's very similar to their previous style they were playing in stage three which means that they don't really have to relearn the meta they've been living it for quite some time which gives them a, a pretty big advantage over a lot of these other teams but i wasn't too impressed coming in uh coming out from seoul and <laughs> I, I had to grab young jim with the flex yeah, young jim just flexed. i don't think he was flexing i think he wanted to uh, fist bump his teammates why not both there. why not both or maybe both okay yeah. i'm sorry when he was flexing in game you might as well flex out game as well it's yeah. true it's true now i think one thing which definitely worked really well for the shanghai dragons was envy i think his diva play was a phenomenal yeah. once again and he was the one of the reasons again why those uh damage dealing heroes can get so much done because he opens up that space he was in the back line of the soul dynasty constantly harassing ryu jehong and uh, jackson so they didn't get too much done or even weren't able to stay alive to actually keep the rest of the team alive right indeed now moving on to the second map we had temple of anubis uh shanghai not really the best at this map uh, no. but they seem to perform pretty well this time around. Yeah, they, they, they've historically been actually quite awful in Temple of Anubis, but it's a new meta, it's a new day, you know, and, and we're starting to see uh, some newer looks coming out from Shanghai, at least when compared to when they last played on Temple of Anubis. So uh, they, they really, I was a little bit worried for them when I was watching uh, backstage because it looked like their defense or their attack, I should say, wasn't as comfortable. I mean, you can see here, didn't get much time on the board, did they? No, they really didn't. But I think that was partially also due to uh, Fitz being able to get so much done. When he played yeah. that May, Shanghai Dragons just couldn't quite break through. And you saw how much uh, it wasn't really Fitz getting the kills. It was Fitz opening it up for his team and, or rather setting it up for his team. Right. That's why on that round, the, the kills was so spread across the board from Seoul Dynasty, where everyone right. just really followed up on the the place which Fitz set up for them. Yeah, yeah, he was getting the damage, they were getting the final blows. Exactly. You, you caught this out in the pre-show, so I gotta give you your flowers for that. Yeah. That was awesome. I'm a genius. All right, so, uh, you know, I wonder, as I'm watching Shanghai, what makes them so good on offense? And I believe, Brent, you have a little bit of insight on that. Yeah, insight's powered by Inter right now. I want to break down exactly uh, a play, actually, how Shanghai Dragons managed to break open the point A uh, attack here. So I want you to pay attention to Young Jin. He's gonna try and make a play all the way back here. I'm gonna slow this down into multiple parts so you can all gather. And Gamsu coming down from the bottom here. And they're gonna go for a combined dive. This is all completely synchronized with the rest of the team and managed to get a pick here onto Illicit. Now, this is planned on so many levels. You need so much coordination to pull this off. Uh, take a, a look at it again from the wide shot. You can see Gamsu comes in from the side here. He's going to distract the, the support line here, so Ryu Jae-hong cannot heal anyone, but the rest of the Shanghai Dragons move their way up onto the high ground, and they sc secure the kill. But let's take a look as well from Young Jin's POV. I really want people to appreciate how far he's coming right now. This is so orchestrated and so well played, they don't even know he's coming out at this point. Like, he's coming at Mach 10 Ooh. speed right at them. And this is a combined effort again from the Shanghai Dragons to be able to coordinate this and manage to get the kill here. And you can see Luffy is the one who actually finishes it off. Everyone's in the perfect position they need to be. Everyone knows exactly what they need to do. Gamsu comes from the side, distracts the healers. Luffy comes in, supplies the healing and the extra damage. Young Jin as well just puts in so much damage to the seismic slam. This is what makes the Shanghai Dragons such a good team, and this is one of the reasons why they are our stage three finalists. This is our dive in 2019. That was exactly. legit. Yeah. That was legit. Uh, I don't know. There was so much going on. I don't, as a defensive player, that scares me to watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. scares me. All right, so guys, going into the second half, we got Hollywood coming up next. This is another map that Shanghai has never won this entire year. Yeah. Uh, this so how do you think they're going to fare this time around? I mean, they <laughs> pulled it off in Anubis. Could I they mean... do it here? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Soul Dynasty right now. They look uh, rather shaky. It doesn't look as coordinated as it should look like. And I'm uh, frankly a little bit surprised that that is the case right now. However, 
This should be their map to win. I wouldn't be surprised if we are actually uh, eventually heading into a map five in this very series. Okay. However, if that is going to be the case, I do think that the Dragons will run away with it. All right. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Zoe. I think that this next map is going to be Souls. Like, Shanghai have looked awful on uh, on Hollywood in particular. They, they don't look comfortable on that map. Maybe they can pull something new out, but uh, I mean, Soul as well, they, they, they do kind of like to play this map a lot. I'm curious of what we're going to be seeing from them. Probably Sombra gameplay is what I'm imagining, but oh, okay. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a map five. All right, well, you heard it from the analysts. The Shanghai Dragons, they're one map away from pulling off this victory, but the Soul Dynasty, good on Hollywood. We're going to see if they can finally get a W in the column when we come back after the break. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan. Every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. Shanghai Dragons have a head start on the competition. The Seoul Dynasty are ready to unleash Fletter. Seoul and Shanghai, the Tiger and the Dragon. Match of the week. Are the Seoul Dynasty ready to unleash Fletter? Do they have something in here? They need a secret weapon. And I mean, what better player than to bring in at this point than Fletter? You would have thought once we brought in more damage dealers, he was going to be in the game. Like, I, I thought when you looked at Fleta as a whole, like his uh, play on the Brigitte was not excellent, but I think uh, when you kind of think of- So it, what? Yeah, when you think of him as a player, like his Widowmaker's good as far as very strong as well. That's right. And he was definitely in the conversation in season one as a potential MVP candidate. He was a kind of player that, and this, we, we coined the Flutter Deadlift as a term to describe yeah. him literally dragging his team, kicking and screaming through some of their games just with his incredible prowess over a multitude of heroes, the Farah. He, I think he still dominates Farah stats even He's now. He's still like number one in like, uh, like when you do like the per like, you know, 60 minutes or 10 minutes, uh, whichever metric I mean, you say to use. I'm trying to gas the boy one. up. I don't even know if he's uh, he's going to be in game. He doesn't look like it. So no, so no, so. Have not made any substitutions. And now we're heading over to uh, another map, as Josh said in the pre-show, that the Dragons haven't won. But it's a completely different meta. Like, uh, I mean, they didn't win Anubis. They win it pretty convincingly. Uh, so now when we go to Hollywood, uh, you don't expect them to just kind of roll. But with the way this series is gone, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't kind of find it unlikely. I mean, they've been crushing. I mean, this... Uh, this has not been an incredibly close series. The Dragons have looked very strong today. 
Oh, and six is ugly, though. I mean, I <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Ain't no, ain't no way of spinning that one positive. Yeah. Not ideal. Uh, the Dragons fairly well, in the past, at least as a franchise, used to having the zero in the left column, but this year, not the case. They are a dominant force. This map, though, we'll have to see if they can overcome that. Look, it's just numbers at the end of the day, and the Dragons are playing some different stuff here. I mean, the double hit scan combo would be nice out of the gates. I don't know if we're going to see that. But Seoul are playing the Genji here. Now, there is an honor in play to set him up with Nano Boost. Genji Sombra on defense with the Orisa. Yeah, it's that. I think that's one of the odder parts for the Dragons, uh, not the Dragons, Soul Dynasty this far, is they, they've been running the Orisa with like some kind of uh, flankers in certain scenarios. Uh, that'll be Jaehyung who connects with a sleep turn on a ding from spawn. I think it's a. Uh, so they did a good job, Soul Dynasty, on Anubis. I think the one thing they, they realized they were doing well is they were able to access the supports of the Shanghai Dragons really well. Not a lot of peel with the different composition they had. And I think maybe now you kind of double down on that with the Sombra and the Genji able to dive into the back line. Jay Hong's on sniper duty there. You can see every time Ding peeks up above, he's taking darts from the enemy. Anna. Oh, that was a burst lineup. Ding looking to try and get the finish here on Jexa. But Luffy gets taken down first, so the Dragons definitely, you know, need to get the first kill on many of these spikes. They've got to push on to the point anyway, because the Lizard's gone down. That's the Resurrect on Luffy. Gamsu is missing, but Yongjin's going to push up anyway and try for something. I'd say it's going to be tough. Here he's forced into Rain Form inside the cafe. Once he gets out, he gets halted into the line of fire, and Marvel picks him up. The Dragons trying to make a play for that back cafe. They're not able to do so, and... A lot of damage being put down by Fit, so that'll result for an EMP for the next fight. Young Jin moves away from Reaper, will now play Doomfist. Is maybe you can get another one of those big Doomfist rollouts. Make a play for the point. It looks like Jay Hong has his arm at an odd angle. It's because he actually plays with an extra raised that. surface added uh, to the desk that he puts his mouse pad on. He, he, I can't imagine what his home setup looks like, but yes, that's why. A little bit odd. Here comes a bite of grenade here to follow up the EMP. No connection there, and Young Jin gets into the back. It's an uppercut to deal with Jay Hong. Gansu does go down. You keep this going though. Uh, you still have Youngjin rolling in the Doomfist in the back now. I Soon think you run out of gas. I, I was like, maybe you can try and get a, like a res off here if Bendy dies, but not able to do so. Ding gets slept again here by Jayhawk, so he'll be taken out. Players come through. Is that EMP usually results in a fight win uh, for the team that you know, pops it right away? So it results in a fight win there for Soul Dynasty. They get the cleanup towards the end. For the Dragons now, you're going to have Nano Blade for Soul Dynasty. You may be in a position where you have to save yet again in another fight. Dragons don't want to be put in that position. If they have to uh, save in this fight, they're going to be put in one fight territory, which is when their margins are very slim and you have to be perfect, which is really difficult to do. Here's the Dragon Blade. There. It's going to be a Nano Boost to Illicit going into the back line. He's found tanks and he'll take them anyway. He had the damage to cut through the front line. The Shanghai Dragons, for all their durability, still come crumbling down. It, it's a win for Soul Dynasty, Mitch, but I, I really don't like that fight for Soul. I'm going to be honest. Four uh, ultimates. You, you end up using Valkyrie, Nano Boost, Supercharger, and your Blade there, and you leave yourself with what uh, an EMP Bomb here combo. Even if you use EMP Bomb win the next fight, the Dragons, they probably have another fight after that if you kind of go rather quickly. So put yourself in a tough spot. Oh, uh, EMP doesn't come out, it's just the bomb, and Gamsu goes down here. The Dragons I needed him to be at the forefront. Here's the follow-up, though. Ding's looking for a couple of picks. Gamsu's brought back into the fight, but Alyssa's already been running rampant through Soul's backline. Bomb over the top, no one found. You see the Dynasty retreat to the safety of the cafe, and then peek back out once the threat is over. Gamsu steps forward, he's trying to assert himself here, but an EMP means he's got no protection. Envy's being healed up at least, but now he's hacked. Hit with a biotic grenade. Shanghai dominated. You, you, can, you can get another fight here, though, if you're the Dragon. So you did allow Soul Dynasty to build up towards some more ultimates. You may end up with a Nano Blade in the next fight, but the Dragons, they'll have the far up with the Nano Boost, potentially a Barrage, and then they'll also have the Supercharger. It's just they have to get a touch here. The Dragons switch up. Envy to the Roadhog now. Yongjin on the McCree. They're looking for Shield Break. They're trying to get Gamsu onto the point in one piece, and then the fight can begin. Ding looking for a chance to go for a barrage here. He is lucky to have a little bit of a platform to stand on. Otherwise, he would have dropped to the ground, but he's being chased here by Illicit. He's able to get away. Supercharger from both teams are put out, and Marvel's able to protect his with that shield. Ding's down. Jay Hong picking him up. Illicit! Hooked during his Dragon Blade. And with Coma out of the picture now, the Dragons may need a little bit more, even with the Lissick going down. Yep, Jay Hong strikes again. Biotic Grenade connects. MD put the sleep on the point, trying to hook Michelle back. 
But that was really just a statement. Hook didn't achieve anything. The Dragons are full held on Hollywood. So that was a bit of a classic Jehan there on the Ana. He's able to connect with four sleeps during that game, connecting on Youngjin every time on the Doomfist when he would go into the back line. You see, when they're able to deal with the Doomfist of Youngjin, they're able to get a lot of good holds. As Seoul Dynasty makes that defense look really clean against the Dragons offense. Some good adjustments from Seoul at the half. We'll see if they can take Hollywood right after this. If you're a flex support player or a, sort of a budding uh, support player in general, you probably know this guy's name, and if you don't, you want to. Jae Hong has been around for a very long time, outlasting many veteran players from around the world, and he's still relevant. He still maintains relevance by being a dominant force, especially when the Ana comes out. He was brutal in the last half. You just saw how hard it was for Ding to even peek over with that Farah, and he was able to sleep in on the Farah a few times. Every time Young Jin would try and get to the back on Doomfist, who where Young Jin's been playing phenomenal this series on the Doomfist, he was able to put him to sleep. Jing Hong, the real difference maker for Seoul Dynasty on their defensive half. The Dragons, they make zero progress at all of even taking the point and locking the payload. I felt like Gamsu just got burnt down whenever he got close to the point. Yes, uh, you know, you, you did have like the Arisa versus Arisa matchup, but I, I think it's really just the, the cycling of the EMP, the blade, and then also the, being able to protect their supports. I think Soul Dynasty did a good job of there. It's a great point. I really didn't see Soul Dynasty supports getting picked off in the kill feed often at all. Yeah, I mean, you're really relying, if you're the dragons, like on the, the poke damage that comes down Whoa. from Ding, and then also like the follow through on Youngjin, you just really got nothing. Jae Hong was the only support to die in that half, and it was once. Yeah. I mean, only three deaths over uh, over Soul in general, so that was actually kind of one-sided. Here comes the Soul Dynasty push, though. They're looking to try and clean this map up. Jae Hong quickly has to throw down a body grenade for his own protection, but he is being pressured out. That is so risky from Dig, and still he gets away with it. You have to be furious of your Soul not to be able to punish that. I mean, they have no other no other pressure, right, besides Jae Hong? If Dig dies there, he can't be resurrected either. That would have been it. I don't know, man. That's crazy stuff. Marvel very low, though. Kept healed up, Biotic Grenade is there, Ding's down now. They keep getting these hacks on to Ding as well. As, oh, it looks no. like Koma's going for the right. Why go for that Resurrect? It's so risky. Uh, Koma maybe realized that was their only chance, but that one is gone. And yeah, this one is going to be over very quickly. Soul Dynasty moving to the point now. They only need one tick and Gamsu shut down entirely. Fitch is hacking him over and over again. And that'll do it. Hollywood. We'll go to Soul Dynasty and they keep alive in the series. Yeah, you would think it's a different team with Soul Dynasty from the first half to the second half. The first half of the series was not good. They come out after halftime here on Hollywood and absolutely destroy the Dragons as they have looked to come alive, really trying to make this one a game. As they potentially, you know, if they take this next map, could force a game five. We'll see if they can do it right after this. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7.
and by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. amazing skill this season but in the end there can only be one pro that takes home the overwatch league mvp award sponsored by the good folks at t-mobile new players have risen through the ranks to become stars while league veterans fight to remain on top now the time has come to immortalize another player in the halls of esports legends and crown the 2019 overwatch league mvp presented by t-mobile here are your mvp finalists Sinatra has been playing like a man possessed. Sinatra. Janu is certainly up there. Best diva in the league. Janu. <laughs> Super. Twilight gets in there, so but Twilight can handle himself. Twilight. Is Plan Rages? I've never seen a player who's more mechanically skilled, I think. Gushui. The winner will be determined by you, the fans, as well as Overwatch League casters and analysts. Cast your vote on Twitter using hashtag OwlMVP and the player's battle tag, or during any remaining regular season broadcast on Twitch. Voting ends on August 25th, so let your voice be heard. It's your league, your decision. Who will you choose as this season's T-Mobile Overwatch League MVP? That's right, everybody. In case you understand British English, it is your league, and it's time to cast your vote for the T-Mobile Overwatch League MVP. Vote for your favorite finalist on tw the Twitch overlay, by the way. It's right there on your screen, unless you're hiding it, then unhide it. Uh, or on Twitter, using hashtag OWLMVP and the player's in-game name that you're voting today. I don't know why I thought it'd be easy to understand me over Josh, but... Uh, uh, Josh would be lying in those videos, too. He's like, oh, yeah, Johnny, that's a diva in the league. His fantasy draft the other day took Fury number one. What's that? I don't know, maybe he's just trying to say things so he gets put in the B-roll, you know what no, I mean? True. So you, you sit on the job. desk, you make ridiculous job. statements and you know they're going to use that voice clip in the future. No, so you get you more just, exposure, I think that's why. I think, yeah. just, I think you just read it. No, but uh, we, have a, we have a good series though, developing. It looked like a really like kind of one-sided one going into halftime. And now Soul Dynasty just come out, they absolutely crush map number three. They storm through Hollywood. Uh, you know, they get a full hold and then they just get a first point tick. We have a lot of subs coming in because of that. Uh, yeah, I also think Shanghai looked pretty lackluster for the attack. Let's see what the subs are. DM comes in, who sat in the crowd before, so I guess he's had time yeah, to come on down. Gotta get some of these guys out of the crowd into the game. Something in for Yongjin here. Some really interesting subs today, by the way. The Frog Queen returns to claim her throne. She comes in for Envy, and again, this is a, the 2-2-2 two, two, two meta is one where Gregory definitely gets more play. Yes. You have to think. Dominant on D.Va, great flex tank player in general. Should expect to see more of her, and Fleto's back. 
And if <laughs> we were talking about him oh, yeah. like at the beginning of the series, like where is this guy? We'd love to see him come in and play as he has been lights out when he's in the game on the damage dealer role. This season, they haven't played him as much as last season, but you remember last year, you know, Fleta was just unbelievable, like Widowmaker, Genji, like his hero pool is so large and he's so strong at a lot of these heroes. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, we talked about him playing a lot of Brikitsu so far throughout the year. That was what was required. Fled is the kind of player that always did what was required. Now, he's not an aggressive Widowmaker. He wasn't really looking to take these crazy challenges, but he was very, very good at out positioning. His Genji, similar. When it was time the Dragon Blade, then he would go in, but a very clever individual, very smart. Uh, and he did, uh, you know, that's why he earned the adage, Fleder is the meta, because he dictated the way that games oh, uh, went when he was popping off. You know, his Widowmaker is a little bit like on the more passive side, like yes. you mentioned, but like everything else is just go, go, go with him. Like his Genji is lights out, you know, far a play too. Plays a lot of different heroes. See him play like some Junkrat in the past. You know, when they had Munchkin in, they would play kind of like a, a, a Junkrat Widowmaker now, type of setup. But... There's a reason why we see subs for this kind of map. There's also a reason why we talk about a lot of Widowmaker action here. That's because Junkertown is going to be our fourth map of the series, and it will be the last one if, uh, if the Soul Dynasty can't step it up a notch. We see a lot of double sniper comps here, Matt. Yep. You know, uh, we, we see plenty of Sombra action. It's it's more of a wild card map where we see a different style of play. Teams quite often just go for the pirate ship setup. Which... It's, it's crazy. I mean, you can come out with double sniper on defense, and the other team could decide to run like a pirate ship, and then you're you're in some trouble, right? Just trying to get the pirate ship off of the cart. You got to kind of switch to dive, and it makes it crazy. And we've seen even even in the past, before we saw May being played, Soul Dynasty used to play a May composition on this. Ah, uh, they did. Uh, where Jay Hung would play the May. Completely so they have forgot played, about uh, They have played May in the past here on Junkertown. It'll be Soul Dynasty on defense. They'll have a listed on the May here, and they'll have a Risa Roadhog in terms of things. DMV Fletter, and I'm glad they showed those clips of Fletter against the Outlaws last year because uh, it's the same map, and it was one where Fletter is very, very good at just like clearing the way for his teammates. We're obviously more of him going for those air shots on the attack side. Defense here is probably looking for safer angling. And I will say, uh, as uh, you, you play a lot of Widowmaker at home. I'm sure you know, like, sometimes it takes a little bit to, like, warm up playing Widow. So for have both of these players on the bench for the whole series, yeah. and, like, you can warm up in the back, but who knows how good it is. Nice wall there. To try and save Marvel, <laughs> but uh, he ends up not getting out. Uh, coming in and playing Widow here kind of cold is very difficult to do. Oh, this is uh, what we call the ice fishing setup here. Using May, Orissa, and Roadhog. We're using walls to try and block your teammates from being dragged away. You're trying to use the Holt and Hook combination to secure picks, and the dragons look very, very good at it. They spent some time up in the Yukon, I guess. <laughs> so, these two players that were in the uh, audience in the first game coming in, making an impact here. It's like Gengri able to pick up a few eliminations. It's she comes out playing Roadhog here at the beginning, and then oh. DM also on the Widowmaker, able to just take, get an elimination towards the Look, end of the fight. They take the first point. Can't ask for much more than this. Gagory's hit every hook so far. Yeah. Uh, it will get harder, of course, as the map progresses to keep that statistic high. Ding. See, it's a little bit harder for Ding against Fleta because he has to wind up a little bit, you know, draw the bowstring back, whereas Ding, Ding can sort of peek around the corner. He has a little bit of charge up time, but. It's more instant damage where Ding has travel time on his arrows. And Fleta has put down like way more damage than Diem, like 900 to 200, but they have, he has no eliminations, no final blows to show for it. There's been no follow up for the rest of Soul, and he's not been hitting any headshots. There it is. Hook there. Fleta finding Diem, though. The Widowmakers are finally starting to interact with one another. The first part of this map had the snipers avoid each other entirely. Now that they need to start fighting. Fleta, drag back. Ding able to find the pick off there. Great halt from Gamsu. The dragons don't really seem to be slowed down at all here. They'll fire off one of their own. And th this kind of looks like the soul we saw at times last year, right? Uh, you know, flood a 30% of team damage, yeah. but they're just not able to get anything going in terms of stops on the defensive end. It's a nice hook there from Michelle, and they'll get a pick on the Gamsu. Jae Hong trying to keep Michelle healed up, but at that range, Gregory is just going to have too much damage. She is on fire. Elicit taken down. Flatter is finding picks. Oh, yeah, he's deadlifting. This may be another one of those games. The Dicey, though, here are able to set up. They actually have two healers plus a tank, so they're a little bit harder to shift with the, uh, the more limited personnel that the Dragons uh, have at this part of the fight. They're waiting for something. Yeah, they are, they're going to wait for their Mercy. They're going to try and get the Mercy back in action rather quickly, and then maybe they can make a push out of this. They may have a small window where they have a player advantage here. 
Gregory trying to follow up with the hook, doesn't find anything, but the returning hold is gainful for the Dynasty. Thing is removed. Still a trade though. DM able to take Ray's a listen out. There's no main. Jackson gets hooked in. Gregory's is a badass right now. And with a nano boost, she'd be able to break that shield down, but the whole hog is forcing her out of position. Another hook, doesn't connect. She's slept, taken down. Koma goes for a really risky res there on the Ding. I mean, Ding is taken out on the Soul Dynasty side of the map, like on the back side of the payload. And he uses Valkyrie and like goes over the building and tries to get a res in between like three players of Soul Dynasty. You're not going to be able to do that. Especially on a map like Junkertown, so wide open, so many snipers in play, like, you're not going to be able to get a res off in that fashion. These fights are less formulaic than what we were seeing in Stage 3. No uh, you know, it really comes down to, can you land a hook hold combo? Can your Widowmaker find a pick? It's, it's not really uh, as easy to, to track as you follow along. That's what Flatter's trying to do now, just get us a player advantage. Get us, you know, a 6v5, and then we can actually start to lean into that and, and play more aggressively. But for now, both teams being very cagey with one another. Michelle taking a bit of damage. Immortality field already deployed by Jackson. Cleverly actually turns his uh, amplification matrix uh, 90 degrees to make sure his teammates can fire through it. It's a really nice spot for him to play out of as well. I mean, you can throw the immortality field behind the walls as uh, this is a long track down here as DM's taking Michelle all the way behind. But at, th at this point, it's going to be Michelle just turn around trying to get back in the fight. Matt Sletter has so much room to work here. No one's threatening him. He just waits for the walls to pop out. Got to hit those shots, though. These uncontested kills need to be found by Fletter. Now I think going to pressure him a bit more. There's another Dragon Strike available for the Dragon's Hanzo. Here it comes straight through the payload as well there. Yep, immediately you saw Elicit had to use his Ice Block. Marvel didn't quite have that same ability. Able to stave off damage, but not prevent it from occurring. Gregory tries to go in, put to sleep. Immortality Field prevented her from getting the kill on the Batiste, but it's fine. Jexa will follow. And the Dragons will get to this last stage of the map here. Get a time extension to 2 minutes and 52. They're both Roadhogs really making good use of the hooks. I know 67% hook accuracy for Gregory and then Michelle on the other side, 75%. So a lot of these hooks that are going down, the Roadhogs are getting a lot of picks off of this. It's At this level, Roadhog players uh, such as Gregory and Michelle always big impact. It's also the timing of like the halt hook combos uh, have gotten so much better from like last year, like it almost seems like if there's only, <laughs> look, I mean, right there, halt, hook, halt, there's no hook there to answer back. This Gomsu's hit behind, he fortifies, goes up in the sky. Thing trying to hide behind the payload here. If he peeks out, he's gonna get knocked into the back wall. Michelle is nano boosted, so doing that extra bit of damage and also that extra bit more durable. Damage reduction on, uh, on that ability goes a long way. Push up here. Just the Valkyrie here for the Dragons. They decide to, I think they probably just hold here. Is that'll be the Blizzard that comes out from Elicit. So you burn the Blizzard here, you just try and gain some ground. If you're Soul Dynasty, they try and play this close with the May with the Wall. I feel like alt use is such a great indicator of team psychology, right? Soul Dynasty used a lot in that fight. You know, they're, they're definitely, it, it feels like they're stressed about the Dragons snowballing through this part of the map. So they dig maybe deeper than they had to, to win the fight. I also think they want, like, uh, advantage of having control over some of these chokes as they can use the main wall on the doors where they're coming in with, like, no speed. They want to be able to push yeah, up, right? really, really throw them off. And you see right there, they, they kind of push the tanks into the other room. They get a sleep, but that'll be a hook. Marvel gets roped on in, gets headshot by Diem. And no one dies to the Dragon Strike, but the Dynasty are forced into a really awkward spot. They have to back away, and they can't contest the payload anymore. So what you were just talking about, with the Dynasty wanting to defend as far forward in this phase as possible, that opportunity now is, is off the table. Just because they got forced out of position and lost uh, their main tank in that fight, you saw that Marvel got hooked in right at the start. Changes here for Soul Dynasty. It looks like they want to go away from the Orisa Hog. They want to get onto the cart. Maybe if you get onto the snipers in the back here with a flat out dive. They're afraid of Ding and DM. They're playing a dive composition to try and shut down the less mobile, uh, sort of more vulnerable snipers, but they can't really pick their head down to spawn right now. That whole hog from Gengar was so clever, really preventing them from taking the initiative of the Soul Dynasty. And now they sort of have to play on the back foot. Mana boost here on a marble. What can they find with this one? Gamsu's caught, but he's going to get healed up. Gengar is there, and you can see Marvel's not even bothering trying to trying to take her down. She's far too tanky. She turns around and punishes Marvel for that mistake, though. Fleta gets Ding and Diem. They do res Diem, but that's two big kills there from Fleta. And then Alyssa comes back on Tracer to contest the cart. And Soul Dynasty may have a chance to swing this.
DM loves to be here. He has all the freedom in the world. He's just waiting to play whack-a-mole for the heads just to peek out. And then he can take them clean off. Resurrect here. Oh, Jackson. He was behind the bubble, protected by, uh, well, thrown down by Marvel there. So, able to get the Resurrect away, but DM is still doing work. Jay Hong now falls. And listen, has to contest in some way, but Gegara gets yet another mana boost. The Gams is right there. The Soul, uh, well, the Soul Dynasty struggle. That's right, DM. Now flex a little, <laughs> up a bit more. Show me where the beach is, son. Pulls the young Jin flex there. As, uh, the dragons are able to complete the map. No time left in the bank, though. So, Soul, as uh, much as some of their like point B defense was strong, the point C defense really fails. But they still are able to dwindle that time all the way down. Change up in uh, in team lineup here, but the chemistry clearly still there. That looked really good. Uh, and look, we talked about Junker Town, and as you guys may have noticed, uh, the Dragons sort of barely finished that map. They ran out of time. But it is a long map, uh, very tough for attackers in some phases to really make progress at all, unless they snowball. We find sometimes that this map is either really fast or really slow, it's rarely in between. The DM, he's like trying to adjust his mouse bungee there. Is, uh, <laughs> no, I, I saw the yesterday uh, a clip, Gamsu very particular about his setup. Yeah. I believe I saw he had like a measuring uh, tape from yeah. like where his uh, like sat seat is to the monitor. Yeah. Like a lot of these players, they try to recreate the same setup like they have at home. Jumps is a very sensible, very particular yeah. individual in general. I mean, you don't become a champion in multiple regions, in multiple yeah. games without being that uh, way. I know we've been to like the Dallas Fuel like practice facility where like their desk is the same height as the stage. No, they're the, the same, same desk. Yeah, it's the same, same exact desk. like setup. So same headsets. See, and I, I feel like, you know, sometimes like you're just going on like as DM, like throwing your like mouse bungee in, just getting up on stage. Like it could be a little off, could feel a little weird. Or I, maybe you're just making up excuses for yourself. On I find it weird playing on that stage. The, the, the chairs move too easily for my like, my chair uh, like, is quite heavy. Yeah, so that's, been your, up there, that's been your main problem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The chair is a little bit too well, movie for you. That yeah. my teammates feed, but I mean, yeah. mostly, the, mostly the chair thing. Yeah, it's definitely the chair's fault. So it'll be Soul Dynasty on offense. Uh, they don't seem to have an issue with the chairs on the stage. No, no, they, they're good with it. So they have chairs like that at home. You see, they simulate the <laughs> setup. DM, it's a warm welcome to Fletter. Oh, oh. That's the hook, though. That's the trade. <laughs> he, goes, <laughs> he goes right into Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Neither at what? I mean, the Fletter kill is resurrectable. Uh, if there was a Mercy on the side of the Dynasty, there just isn't, though. So they have to deal with that. They might put him at a disadvantage in the Widow head-to-head. -head, but DM was dragged so far forward, he couldn't have been resurrected either. Gagory gets bowled over. Gamsu quickly trying to backtrack here. He's out of position. Now with Luffy and Koma dead, that's it. That is it. First point will be taken by the Soul Dynasty here, unless there's a last bit of contest from the Dragons, but I find that exceedingly unlikely. I really like the Batiste setup here with Soul Dynasty, as you have that immortality field, like if somebody gets hooked and you don't have the wall available to use, and you can use like his AoE burst heal, everyone in this kind of setup is going to play close quarters next to each other, so you may as well use Batiste and some of his kit as changes come through here. For dragons, it looks like we're gonna see some soul as well. So the dragons, they'll have Ding go and play Farah. I like this. Farah Mercy in play, and now you're gonna go straight up dive here. I like soul this Dynasty. though, from the dragons, they're pushing up. They realize that the, the Dynasty give away a bit of momentum in positioning an old economy by switching their composition. The dragons push up, and they're gonna take advantage of that. Michelle gets desuited immediately, and this is a difficult uh, hold to break, actually, now with the dragons on the high ground. Soul had to like force them to drop down by playing the payload almost. Yeah, and I, I think the dive works when you're Soul Dynasty and you're on defense and you're going for that point C hold. Uh, there's a lot of space for your players to go around and flank. This is a really choke-oriented space where Shanghai Dragons, they take advantage of Soul Dynasty going back and switching by taking the real estate a little bit more forward up. And they could be able to hold some of these chokes. Like, Marlo has to go down here to the cart, but he's just going to get pelted with rockets. You have hull hook combos. A lot to deal with. See there, Marvel trying to take their high ground. They need to get the flanks going. That's what they need to do. They're trying to pressure payload, but they have a Winston, so they can't just sit on the payload. They're actually playing a uh, dying composition. Ding, by the way, goes for a solo barrage to get rid of Marvel while he slept. That's, uh, that's pretty rude, but also effective. I feel that. They used the Nano on the Flutter to actually farm Blade, and then they also got Gegory because she is hit with a Biotic Grenade that comes through from j -Hong, She's back, though. That'll get the res. Hook, j Hong down. Okay, that's big. Now the Dragons can start to assert themselves by using the high ground. And yeah, Soul are like, I don't want any of this right now. I don't want any of uh, the whole hog. I don't want any of you know, they <laughs> the Nano. Uh, they try and use Blade. You could potentially see a whole hog trying to knock this back. Valkyrie to heal everybody else up. Good combination. Just keep the Genji away. 
Illicit, though, behind uh, enemy lines. We haven't spoken or really seen him for a no. while. He's way deep in the back. He's probably trying to spawn cam or really get behind DM and shut down yeah. the Widow. And he's trying to get this EMP as well. He's actually fighting with DM right now. Uh, DM wins that one. Wow. Yeah, okay. JL is going to take down Coma, though, and Flet is missing. So ugh, Illicit and Flet are both down. A resurrect here from Jexer. Nice use of defense matrix by Michelle to make sure that's not interrupted or Jexer is killed. And DM's playing so far away. He has to move up a little bit now to get a line of sight, but. Shanghai has really set up a good defense here. Deem with another one. Uh, he's killing it. And he's just sat in the back. He's safe as heck. There's a sleep dart actually on towards Illicit here. What a setup from J-Hong. Hitting this Sombra. Deem doesn't have to worry about anything. He either takes the 1v1 against Illicit and wins, or J-Hong just does it for him. So you're going to have Luffy in position up on top here. So it's his sleep dart. Luffy, should I say. You're so used to Jay Hong sleep, sleep darting people. You just he's been doing it season into your one, man. Brain. Yeah. This map actually has some of his best highlights uh, on like Dragon Blading players. Oh, they have to use a Winston bubble here to block the, the hook. So now you don't have the bubble to get through the choke because now Dink can just spam rockets down. So Marvel can't show himself where he basically no, you're, now eliminated. You're, now, you're in a, now you're in a spot where you're waiting again. Oh, no! He's not waiting now. I mean, DM has balls and... I mean, look, the positive for the Soul Dynasty is there's still two minutes on the clock. But you, you've kind of been building up this big, like, war chest of ultimates where you think, like, EMP Nano Blade, like, maybe gets it done. But here it is. Dink's still alive. Oh, Dink didn't get hit with that EMP at all. This could be pretty good. Uh, yeah, the Barrage, though, very questionable. He really needs to do it closer. There is a distinct travel time of the rockets, but it doesn't seem to matter because Gamsu was just sat there being healed up the whole time. What was Sol trying to accomplish for that EMP, I wonder? And they, and they hold on to Blade for so long, and they, they, they don't combo Nano with it. Is that the series right there? Have we just seen Shanghai basically seal this up? I mean, you don't know. I mean, you do have Valkyrie and Nano, but you're going to have to win two, maybe three fights with how close Shanghai's playing. So that, that is a really big fight that goes in Shanghai's favor there. There was the Jay Hong sleep. I was on Gegger even. She can really just do as she pleases right now. Now that we saw the Marvel, who's he looking for? Both targets are so tanky. Marvel is trying to find a kill somewhere, but Dia picks off Alyssa. He's finding the most unlikely kills on the most slippery of suspects. Knocked away, being kept alive but barely, but Marvel spent some time, I guess, a clown score because he's out there juggling. Huge primal rage from Marvel. But it was an ultimate that had to be used along with many others for Soul to get any progress here. Yes, yeah, they end up using their nano boost on the Marvel as he's able to get to the high ground and really the difference is they're able to access Luffy and Diem. They get Luffy at the beginning and then Diem really forced into a tough spot with the primal rage, but Diem goes over to Tracer. Try and get back. They know there's just one fight they need to win here. Flutter close to Blade here. J-Hong no Nana Boost, so he's going to have to go for the Blade on its own. Or wait, but I don't think he really has that luxury. Alyssa down again. He's getting nothing done so far, Matt, in this half. Absolutely nothing. Now Flutter goes for the Blade, but he waited on it way too long. And now, oh, cheeky climb. Ding, though. With three in that fight. Michelle's still alive, but there's not going to be anything he's going to be able to do. The are too good, Matt. They are a step ahead. Junker Town hasn't been good for Seoul lately, and well, today is no exception here. What a way to cap off our match of the week with Ding, just bringing down the hail. Gaggery coming in. Big impact on the Roadhog, getting a lot of... <laughs> okay. At least it just got a facelift there from Gaggery in the final moments. Scrap Gun doing its work, and that will do it. The Shanghai Dragons take victory here. Seoul Dynasty, rough game for them. They're able to bring one back on Hollywood, but the Dragons get their first win on Temple of Anubis. And from that point on, you had to think they were favored to win. Yes, Diem comes in in the final map. Gregory with the flags walking across the stage. She has 14 final blows. Diem with 18 here on Junker Town. The two big substitutions for the Dragons pay off big at the end. Gregory ends up you know, with 23% you know, of her team's damage. Only eight deaths. Ding as well. Huge performance. I think you have to say at this point, Ding is the quintessential Farah. He's the kind of player that should appear in your mind when you think about the role, when you think about the impact that Farah can provide when it comes to barrages, when it comes to air shots, when it comes to finishing off kills from that high ground. Just such an important player. He is crucial to the Shanghai Dragon's success. And they use him so well. Great to see Gregory back on stage. A smile to light up the room. We hope to see more of her. In the coming weeks, the Dragons now shift up a gear and maybe they're the ones 
that are laying down a dynasty. We're going to go now down to the stage with our good friend Danny Lim with some insights from the Dragons. Thanks, guys. Everybody, make some noise for Youngjin right here. Yeah. Congratulations. Now, earlier this week, you guys suffered a tough loss against the Vancouver Titans, but you guys today came out strong and defeated the Seoul Dynasty. How are you guys able to bounce back, bounce back so quickly? Oh, 아무래도 이번 주 시작하면서 어, 좀 아쉽게 벤쿠버 팀에게 패배를 했지만 오늘은 또 승리를 거두시게 되셨습니다. 좀 팀적으로 어떤 조정과 좀 어떤 변화가 있어서 오늘 승리를 거두시게 되셨나요? 아, 벤쿠버한테 패배하고 나서 아무래도 지금 이제 투투투 락이 됐으니까 그래도 저희만의 스타일을 가져가는 게 어떤가 해가지고 네 그렇게 바뀌었어요. So after our loss against the Vancouver Titans, uh, we kind of all of our team talked, and because it's, we have the roll lock going on, we sort of figured that we should have our own style of roll lock, our own style of two to two composition. So I feel like that's how we won. Alrighty, before I send you off. I actually have to um, ask you another quick question, and I need your explanation on this. I think, yeah, right there. 자, 위로 좀 보시면은, right there. Do you see that, 이거? The, the, the pose? Can you explain to me what was going on? Were you just uh, flexing because the, uh, I feel like that was, that was on Ilios after round one on, on, on Well. Um, just explain to me what was going on. 아무래도 지금 방금 저 포즈가 뭔지 좀 설명을 좀 해주세요. 그, 뭐지? 그, 쇼크 경기 보는데, 시나트라 있잖아요. 반대 경기 끝나고 나서 응. 경기 끝나고서 그 뭐지 시나트라가 딱 이렇게 하는 거예요. 그게 너무 멋있어가지고 우리도 야 우리도 좋아하자 해가지고 했습니다. Alrighty, so after we saw San Francisco Sharks match, um, we Youngjin actually saw Sinatra doing the same pose, and he really thought it was cool. So he actually talked to the team and he said he wanted to sort of copy Sinatra's pose, which you guys saw, and he did. And it's not only you, but we also saw Kiguri. And um, I think we, I saw DM as well. Are you guys actually going to have all the team do it from now on? 아무래도 오늘 방금 또 영진 선수 했지만은 영진 선수가 나가신 다음에 또 DM 선수랑 개구리 선수도 같이 하셨어요. 다음에는 전 팀이 다, 하시, 다 하시, 하실 건가요? 그거는 아마 결승전에서 다 같이 하지 않을까요? 저희 얘기 나와서 결승전에서. Alrighty. So yeah, 영진 says that the whole team is going to do that pose in the finals. So I am very excited. Thank you so much, Youngjin. Mitchell, Matt, back to you guys. Okay, I, I dig that pose. Uh, like a, what about this one, though? I want to see this pose from everyone as well. From I don't know, I just like it. It's a cool pose. If you're a Final Fantasy fan, hey, you probably I mean, recognize uh, it. The pose is clearly working for Sinatra. He's in our top five. So we go from, MVP, we've go we gone from so. T-posing to established dominance to yeah, yeah, the beaches, both directions. Why to, not? Whatever, that's fine. Why not? Uh, yeah, so tough one for the Seoul Dynasty, though. If we, we, we backtrack a little bit right. here as well. I, you know, we, they look better on Hollywood. I personally, I'll be honest, I think that Shanghai just didn't look very, very good on, on Hollywood in they general. They look really poor on Hollywood. Yeah, yeah uh, and uh, for the... For the dynasty, we need to see more from them. They have a tough schedule. I mean, going up against the Shock, then against the Dragons, that is a big ask. But this, if this team wants to have any chance of getting into playoffs, they need to be winning these games. And you know what? If they don't, that's all the games they lost prior that they should have won. That Unfortunately, in the past, we've seen this, dra uh, the, not the Dragons, we've seen the Seoul Dynasty really struggle in situations like this, where they need to get wins. Like, uh, you remember back to season one, they had a game like it was a must win against the Shock, who like didn't have Sinatra and Super at the time. They were playing a different roster and they couldn't get a win there to get into the playoffs. And like this team has struggled when it really matters. And I think you're a little bit worried about them here in stage four. Yeah. Maybe we look at the end of two seasons and ask if it's a dynasty or disappointment. It's something to bear in mind. Let's talk about our play of the match though, presented to you by Omen by HP. Uh, and I think this is fair. Young Money, Young Thug, Young Jin comes out with the honors. Uh, the Doomfist is just something that teams don't really know how to play around right now. Not a lot of teams are going for this pick, but for Shanghai, it's serving them so well. Maybe that's what Young Jin meant when he was talking about their own style of 2 2 2. And, and I think you can uh, give this to Young Jin because of just his impact on the first two maps. Like, you clearly saw when the Doomfist was not working in game three on Hollywood, they really could get absolutely nothing going. At their first two maps, the two maps that they win and really roll through Soul Dynasty were clearly built around his Doomfist play. What a redemption arc for this guy. Remember when he was playing Brigitte and walking off the payload in overtime? I mean, he's done that a few times, but I mean, hey, it's, it's a lot harder to do on Doomfist. You're well, ways away from the payload. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> nice little improvement there from Young Jin so far. And you know, it's good for him that he gets to actually start to flex into some of these roles that he is clearly more a little bit more comfortable yeah. with. I think that is important. Uh, we get to see some of the very best in these players come to the fore. And I think that's one of the most important parts. So this is our season standings now. Neither of those teams sneak into the top six with that win, Dragons but the Dragons... Dynasty, that's right. 
and the Dragons have a chance here. Look, they probably need another win or two, but hey, we see how, we'll have to see how the Gladiators go. They looked a little bit average at the start of the stage. And, and you kind of looked at like where Soul Dynasty was, and you're like, ah, oh, they're so safe, and they only have like 11 losses, but you, know, you start to look at some of those teams underneath them, and those are teams that are surging upwards, and like, the, you know, your 12th place team has 12 losses. Like, there's a world in which, like, they lose another game, like, you're going from like eighth down to, it's a quick you slide. Know, 10th. The, the only thing the saving grace for them is their map differential. It's great. Yeah, it has been good so far, and it's not too bad after this series, yeah. even. It's only a minus two overall. Coming up next, though, the fun don't stop. Thank you for joining us for our match of the week. But up next is the London Spitfire taking on the Toronto Defiant. Interesting to see how these two teams are shaping up on the other side of the roll lock change. So stick around for that one. We'll be back with more Overwatch League right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.